I will go to the gentlelady from Wyoming, Ms. Loomis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, General, I've, uh, I'm late to this hearing, but I have the advantage of your written testimony. So if this is, these questions are a bit redundant, forgive me. But I, I do, I, I, some things uh, caught me in your written testimony. Um, you said, we didn't know how long this would last, this meaning the attacks on 9-11-12. We didn't know how long this would last when we became aware of the distress, nor did we completely understand what we had in front of us, be it a kidnapping, rescue, recovery, or a protracted hostile engagement. Can you elaborate on that? What was it like watching from Stuttgart, watching what was happening in Benghazi? And, and I further went on to say, and, or, or any or all of those things. It was a situation where we were we were uh, very much in the in the uh, hunt for information from the J2 shop perspective, so we could give the commander, uh, the uh, the vice on station, and the uh, commander back in D.C. the best information possible. So, for us, we were very much on the trail through chat rooms, et cetera, using the mechanism, not to go into it too deeply, but using the mechanisms that are out there for an intelligence organization to formulate understanding based upon facts. That's what we pursued. And we provided that to our on-scene commander, the vice admiral, as well as up-channeled that and, and sent it across to other organizations so that we were sharing to the maximum extent possible in order to help build that picture of understanding and flesh it out even further. It's not good enough to know what's going on right there. We need to find attribution so that then you can take action. You want actionable intelligence. Okay, and at what point did you know that no assets were going to be sent uh, to Benghazi that night? No special ops, no... It began to become... Units. More and more evident as the, the morning went on, uh, it appeared as though that was to take place, but it even continued on further as we tried to help, you know, FBI and others get in there after, if you will, the, the death of those Americans to go into the pursuit mode. As I just described, actionable intelligence is what you provide to an operator. Mm -hmm. And who was making the decisions not to go in, not to respond? That, uh, that would be, I, from my perspective, it appeared that it was up channel beyond uh, the Department of Defense, somewhere, somewhere outside of DOD. We respond to civilian leadership, and that's what we would be looking for, civilian so, leadership. So normally, uh, those kinds of decisions would be uh, made after the military conferred with civilian leadership in Washington. Uh, yes, sir. Now we're into my boss's boss's business, but mm -hmm. indeed, that, that would be who he would be talking with. Okay. And that would be the normal chain of discussion. Yes, Okay. Did you assume that those discussions were going on? Those discussions between the military chain of command, the State Department, the Defense Department, and the White House? Absolutely. And the reason I can state it emphatically is because part of what we did as an intelligence organization and all intelligence organizations, you're looking for what's the next step mm -hmm. so you can ferret out the next best pieces of information and fact to help inform so that those operations can be effective. In your military experience, uh, what would have been a more normal response uh, in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. Stuttgart time, uh, when you knew you had uh, an ambassador down uh, and later in the night you knew you had uh, personnel on the CIA annex roof uh, and there was an exchange of fire. What would you have expected in your military experience to happen? Go, go, go. And when did it become apparent to you there would be no go? 
as the as the, as the morning progressed and we had some people moving at some points in time they're asked to stop midway through some of their deployments reaching Europe etc or other locations uh, it just there was no it did not appear to us that there was any momentum behind it in, in how many of you were together in in Stuttgart watching this unfold what excuse me mr. chairman Go ahead. my time has expired general thank you general I now recognize myself for five minutes um, 